folks, welcome back to Rocket Science 101. Today we're going to be talking about how rockets stabilize on their axes. Let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so how do rockets stabilize on their axes? There's three different configurations for rocket stabilization. Let's check them out. Okay, so the first configuration looks like this. So here's our rocket with its cylindrical body and it has a nose cone on the top and it has some hole on the back for exhaust to leave uh, the rocket. So here's our exhaust hole. And now let's talk about the two main points on the rocket that determine its stability. Okay, the first point is the center of gravity. That's where the saw that's where the rocket balances all of its weight that's where the mass of the rocket balances so that right there is the symbol for center of gravity it's separated into four quadrants and two of the quadrants are yellow okay so that is the symbol for center of gravity and that's where all the weight of the rocket all the mass uh, balances okay that's point number one and we're gonna call that the distance from this point the center of gravity to the nose cone we're gonna call that distance D sub CG the distance from the nose to the center of gravity second main point is this one this right here is another point and we call it the center of pressure this is where all the aerodynamic forces are gonna act on the rocket that's the point okay and the distance from that point to the nose cone we're gonna call this distance right here this distance we're gonna call it D sub CP okay the distance from the nose cone to the center of pressure now here's the key concept here's the key concept imagine this rocket is hurtling straight up okay so i'm gonna draw the rocket again over here so here's my rocket and here's the the exhaust hole and here's the rocket now because we want the center of gravity to be in front of the center of pressure we're going to introduce fins to our rocket here are the fins of the rocket and these fins help push back the center of pressure without pushing back the center of gravity because these fins even though they have negligible weight they have a lot of surface area and that's going to push back the center of pressure because that means a lot more of the wind is going to hit this surface area okay great so we got our rocket hurtling up towards the sky with its fins added on and what's going to happen well what's going to happen is that rocket is going to encounter a lot of wind okay these winds are going to hit the rocket from the front okay now here's what happens because you've got your center of gravity on the front here's my center of gravity and here's my center of pressure the center of pressure is going to act as something very special the center of pressure is going to act as a moment this right here the center of pressure is going to act as a moment around the fulcrum the fulcrum of course is the center of gravity so what's going to happen is these winds are going to rotate the rocket with the lever being the distance from the moment to the fulcrum and the rocket is going to turn this way and it's going to act as a restorative force restorative force so that means if the rocket is unstable this moment is going to help restore the rocket to its original intended direction okay so that is the stable version of a rocket okay the stable version of a rocket involves the distance from the nose to the center of gravity being smaller than the distance from the nose to the center of pressure that's our stable configuration on the other hand we can have a neutral configuration here's our neutral configuration in which the center of gravity and the center of pressure are in the same exact location so what would that look like when you have a neutral configuration what's happening well your center of gravity which is going to be right in the balancing point of the rocket and your center of pressure are going to be in virtually the same spots and why is that bad well that's bad because you don't know if your rocket is going to survive the winds or not this is almost like a softball in a softball the center of gravity and the center of pressure are virtually the same right if you have a ball in the wind the center of gravity which is right here and the center of pressure which is right here are the same but nonetheless the wind is gonna rotate it in ways that you cannot predict okay and that's why this is a neutral but still undesirable condition and our final type of stabilization is the unstable configuration that's the one that a lot of people have the unstable configuration looks like this you have your rocket it's hurtling into the wind 
here's your cylindrical body here's the exhaust hole here are your fins here's your fin number one fin number two which help increase your surface area and thereby drag back your center of pressure here is your nose and now what's going to happen the unstable configuration means your center of pressure is ahead of your center of gravity and so what what's the problem with that the problem with that is the distance from the nose to the center of pressure is going to be less than the distance from the nose to the center of gravity so how can we write that we can write that condition as the distance from the nose to the center of pressure is less than the distance from the nose to the center of gravity and that's dangerous because the wind can topple your rocket imagine we got winds heading for the nose in this direction well what's going to happen is you're not going to have a restorative force you're going to have a disastrous force this is going to topple the rocket it's going to change the rocket's direction and the rocket is going to head straight for the ground and that's why this is an unstable configuration okay because the wind the wind can topple the rocket can topple the rocket now when we talked about a stable configuration where the center of gravity is ahead of the center of pressure what do we mean let's be more specific that means the distance this distance right here let me clarify that the distance from the center of gravity to the center of pressure has to be the diameter of the rocket cylindrical body so this right here is the diameter so that would be the optimal distance from the center of gravity to the center of pressure. All right, folks, thanks for watching this episode of Rocket Science 101. We'll, check, we'll you check you out next time. Thanks for watching. Sponsored by Brilliant.org. Ian Besson plus MKO plus scaffolding Do equal you learning. Excuse me? We believe anyone can learn can anything. Do that? That's why our motto is memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. And the first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that you too can, can become, become the, the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.